Right, so the Samsung Galaxy S22 series has just launched and we need to talk. So earlier in the week, I cruised down to London to... Cruised? Not cool enough to cruise. I trained it down to London to go hands-on with the brand new Galaxy S22 series of devices at Samsung's KX Center. They have their brand new Samsung Tab S8 series of devices and their S22 series of devices, which includes the S22, S22 Plus and S22 Ultra. But not all is as it seems, and in some ways, Samsung seemed to be borrowing a few trading ideas from a fierce competitor. Let's dive. So the S22 and S22 Plus are basically the same phone, just different sizes, of course. So similar rear design to the S21 and a rather sharp and smart flat display, which I really enjoyed using. The edges are slightly rounded, but I can't help feeling like Samsung are edging the series towards a more squared off look, something that you will see along the lines of the iPhone 13, for example. And I'm kind of on the fence about that decision. Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which is the latest and strongest glass from Corning and a Samsung S22 series exclusive as well, I might add. And the phones come in phantom black, phantom white, green and pink gold. The S22 Ultra shares the same Gorilla Glass Victus Plus with an armoured aluminium frame and three of those colours. But instead of the pink gold, the fourth and signature shade is this matte textured burgundy, which I wasn't sure about at first, but after playing around with it for some minutes, I can confirm, in my opinion anyway, it's a looker. Another thing I like the look of is the camera array, which finally has been housed seamlessly into the back panel with no raised bump. It does slightly wobble on the table, but nothing like what we've seen from the majority of smartphones currently on the market. The multiple lens setup does slightly look like a spider again. So if you're an arachnophobia, if you're an arachnophobia, if you're an arachnophobic, then it might be time to look away. But safe to say the design implementation is one of the best. Now, in terms of those actual lenses, there's some slightly disappointing news or some good news, depending on how you look at it. In terms of hardware, we basically have the same camera as on the S21 Ultra, a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle lens with a 120 degree field of view, a 108 megapixel f1.8 wide primary and two 10 megapixel telephoto lenses, one periscope in nature with three times and 10 times optical zooms. Yes, again, you can get up to a hundred times total zoom, but also again, at these distances, the quality doesn't appear all that great. And the ideal length again is anywhere up to around 30 times zoom. So you could say it's a little bit of a shame there haven't been any major hardware upgrades to the camera with this device. But on the flip side, the S21 Ultra was one of the most complete camera smartphones on the planet last year. So you might think why radically change a great thing? That's not to say there haven't been any changes here and a lot of them are subtle, but could have huge benefits. A lot of the new S22 Ultra's camera features are focused on low light capabilities, for example. The phone's MPU or neural processing unit is up to two times faster, promising quicker AI driven tasks, such as sharpening details and reducing noise in low light conditions. There have been advanced Snapchat features to do with night mode and the enhanced AI high resolution technology apparently processes up to four times more data to sharpen the details in your images. The 108 megapixel primary sensor uses Nona binning technology, which groups nine pixels into one, basically giving you the equivalent of a 12 megapixel shot. And yes, when cropping in, this will give you slightly less detail, but in low light conditions, it allows in more light and should enhance your low light performance by giving you brighter, more vibrant images. Samsung appeared to think that improvements in low light performance is an area that you guys would like to see. And presumably they feel the same about portrait shots as well, because they have introduced AI stereo depth map technology that goes in search of and looks to enhance all of your subjects unique features in the foreground of the shot, keeping them nicely in focus while blurring everything else out. One of the biggest problems phone manufacturers have had over the last few years is because portrait shots use a lot of software for that effect, edge detection can sometimes be a problem. Hair strands, for example, often get blurred into the background. And while I haven't fully tested this new tech, uh, Apparently, according to Samsung, they have improved this area. And apparently they have improved this area with pets as well. So hopefully we can test it out in due course with Dotsie here. Come on then, say hello. 
you big fluff ball. Whew. You need a groom. That winter coat is coming off. All right, go on then. Off you scoot. Off you scoot. Yes, that is an S22 in case. Boo. Probably just gonna be on the desk for the continued video now, so we'll probably uh, just have to continue, right? The front-facing 40 megapixel sensor also has special portrait features, such as studio lighting, where you can adjust the image by tapping on the screen to customize how your subject appears to be lit. For that real professional look, and there's also night mode on the front camera as well. So if you are one of these people that desperately has to stand there and take a picture in the dark, pouting in your pajamas, then you uh, you can do that as well. I don't. I, d I don't. I, I do sometimes. <laughs> Come on, get you down. Oh dear. You as expected get a pro mode if you want to take your photography to the next level. And there is an expert raw application which allows you to save 16-bit raw files which can be fully customized on your phone or tab S8, for example, for the ultimate post-production experience. In terms of video, you get the usual spec suspects, 8K resolution, for example, but there are a couple of really cool new features also. Not only do you see the super steady system again for great stabilization, but there's also a really cool new auto frame rate feature, which basically alters the frame rate of your video depending on the lighting conditions to find that optimum rate. On top of this is also a wicked auto framing feature, which can actually detect up to five people up to five meters away. Great if you're shooting a group of people and wanting to make sure that all of your subjects are in focus. And get this, you can also actually tap on the screen on one specific person. And not only does it make sure that that one specific person is the main focal point, but you can also zoom in and out, giving your video that really nice stylized look. And speaking of all things stylized, is there anything more finesse than an S Pen on a smartphone? Like it or loathe it, it's unique. The S Pen returns housed within a Samsung phone for the first time since the Note 20 Ultra. But is it a welcome return? Well, first let's address the fact that yes, it is better now that it is integrated into the device from the S21 Ultra from last year, which in my opinion felt a little bit clunky just being in the case. The Note series just worked. The S21 Ultra with the pen, not so much. And I mentioned that back then with that launch, as did I mention the fact that all Note lovers probably shouldn't be too disappointed by the fact that there was no Note 21 from last year because I had a feeling the day would come. Over the last few years, the S series and the Note series were kind of bleeding into one in many ways. The fusion was inevitable and when there was no Note 21, the writing was on the wall. <laughs> that is hideous. Samsung say they've upgraded the all-round S Pen experience but cold hard facts, what's actually new? Well, the latency has been reduced from nine milliseconds to 2.8 milliseconds, really impressive. And Samsung say they've done this by enhancing AI-based coordinate prediction technology and, up, and an upgrade of Wacom's handwriting component. A lot of fancy words, but simply the pen can anticipate where you're looking to go next better for improved accuracy. There's an advanced handwriting to text feature with a higher recognition rate, which is now compatible with 88 languages, 12 more than before. You can create a note with handwriting and click convert to change it to text. And if you're looking for contacts, for example, you can start scribbling a name and it will recognize your scroll and convert it to text form, suggesting names for you to dial. The convert feature is great if you have really messy handwriting like me. I mean, it's shockingly, shockingly bad. Although by the time you've scribbled it out and then followed the steps to convert it to text, it might have just been quicker to just type the text. And using it in the contact section, depending on your legibility of handwriting, again, 
it can be a little bit hit and miss. Outside of that, there isn't really a great deal new here with the S Pen, but it was a pretty well-rounded piece of kit before, and the usual features such as Smart Select, Screen Write, AR Doodle, and using it to control the camera when the phone is not in your hand are all still present. Samsung have also improved Samsung Notes with features such as collaboration view in conjunction with the Tab S8 series, but I'll save that for another video. As far as I can see, minor upgrades on the S Pen from the Note 20 Ultra, nothing necessarily to shout home about, but if you want a stylus on a smartphone, there really is nothing like it on the market. It is elite. It does feel smoother and even more like pen on paper than ever before, but the Note 20 Ultra already felt great. So better, yes, game changer, maybe not. Now, speaking of game changer, game, gaming, let's talk performance. That was a truly awful segue. As elegant as the S22 Ultra is, the combination of the stunning display and serious hardware internals make this phone an excellent option, maybe even the one to beat for gaming and media consumption. The 6.8 inch Quad HD 120Hz LTPO AMOLED panel is best in class, as is the RAM and storage application, up to max 16 gigabytes and one terabyte respectively. And the chipset powering it, depending on your region, will either give you a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or the in-house Exynos 2200 which should absolutely crush everything you throw at it. Now, for the last few years, the Qualcomm variants have kind of had the upper hand on the Exynos versions in cold, hard numbers. But if early performance rumors are anything to go by, it should be a very, very close call this year. It could be, quite frankly, game on. Both chips are built on a four nanometer process, uh, but the, for the first time, the Exynos 2200 is using an AMD GPU so the dragon could get a taste of its own flames. <laughs> what is that? What even is that? As always, when it comes to the two chips, that's one of the biggest discrepancies is battery life. Both phone variants will, of course, have a 5000 mAh battery, but it'd be interesting to see how the actual real world drainage um, plays out. More on that to come in due course. And both phones will have Android 12, Samsung One UI 4.1 software over the top. And this has seen some nice new tweaks like custom themes, which completely alter the interface colors as an example. So there's absolutely no doubt about it. The S22 Ultra looks like one hell of a new smartphone, but come on, Samsung, who are you kidding? This is a no. It absolutely reeks of the Note 20 Ultra, camera design aside. Same S Pen placement, same framing, same back finish, same display, visually anyway. And Samsung are definitely doing something quite clever here. I mentioned on the S21 launch that it felt very much like an Apple presentation with focusing far less on cold hard specs and more on an emotional response and real world everyday use. I also feel that in the last few years, Samsung with their growing hardware and software product itinerary and seamless integration between them, I feel like they've started to build their own kind of Apple-esque walled garden in an attempt to maximize continued profits and also make it a lot harder for Samsung users to leave. And this idea of profits and Apple were the first things that came to mind when I picked up the S22 series of phones. Apple traditionally on their iPhones have a sort of three to four year design recyclement, if that's a word, recyclement. That's a good one. New word of the day. Basically, they have the same design for three or four years and then they change it. As a result, because the design hardware pretty much remains the same in that time, presumably production machinery and materials can be recycled and repeated during that time also to maximize profits. Samsung, on the other hand, up until the last couple of years have pretty much, although it may only be minor, have pretty much had a new design every year on their phones. The S22 series is very, very much the S21 series from a design point of view. Is that lazy? Possibly, but I can't really blame them. The S21 series was a beautiful set of devices and why change something that already works and you've got to maximize those profits, right? So if you do have a Note 20 Ultra, for example, is there enough of a difference with the S22 Ultra? Slightly better camera, slightly better battery, slightly better performance with the new chipset. 
for that amount of money. Depends on your trading options, I suppose. And of course, if you don't need an S Pen and you have the S21 Ultra, there's even less of an upgrade as you would expect. But if you don't have either of those two phones, then the S22 Ultra is, in my opinion, probably the best smartphone available on the market currently right now. There really is nothing this phone doesn't do and do really, really well. The trouble is, especially in this industry, if you're seen to be standing still or treading water, then often the feedback can be quite unforgiving. And I don't feel that this phone, it may not get the credit it actually deserves because it's insanely good when you look at everything involved. It is nice to see Samsung continuing to look into their production of phones and accessories with an eco-conscious mindset, using techniques such as repurposed fishing nets and reducing the size and adapting the materials of their packaging. Long may that continue. But yeah, I'm really conscious to see whether Samsung do go down the route of recycling the design for a few years before upgrading and just kind of changing internals, etc., similar to what Apple have done for as long as I can remember to be continued. Now, if you are looking to purchase a brand new Samsung S22 series phone, then today's video sponsor Torres might be just the ticket. Torres are a popular smartphone accessories manufacturer offering cases, screen protectors, smart accessories, and more. And today in the studio, I have some brand new cases for the S22. I have two orange and white packaged cases here, one saying diamond clear, the other one saying crystal clear, and I have a black and silver looking package case which says shockproof for Samsung S22. But let's dive in starting with the diamond clear one, which is a really nice blend of being supple enough to easily be moldable to snap onto the phone, but still hard enough to feel like you're getting some solid protection. The second case is the crystal clear and this looks very similar but it is slightly softer to the uh, bend so it is more like a, a silicon material feeling. Uh, this one's a bit harder and again very easy to snap on like so. And then finally we have the shockproof one and this one has a really nice kind of translucent matte stealth looking finish, which I think looks really, really cool, really smart. Like with the first two, really simple to snap on. And you also get these really funky, customizable, fluorescent colored buttons, which you can add to the case if you wanted to. That's a really nice touch. And you also get this little card here, which is a QR code, which you can scan for what it says here, a lifetime warranty, which is always nice to have. I will leave a link to all of these and more from Torres in the video description below. So definitely check it out if you are looking to get a brand new Samsung S22 series phone and you need accessories for it. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new to the channel and want to see my full in-depth coverage, unboxings, reviews, etc., of the new Samsung S22 series, smartphones in general, tech in general. Check out this video here if you want a full list of what I think are the best smartphones available right now on the market. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Tess, people, peace out.